Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made. Can we open our mouth and bless the Lord this morning? Come on, can we bless the Lord with the fruit of our lips this morning? Come on, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, and we're here for no other reason. Hallelujah, but to give God the glory. I said we're here for no other reason. Oh, glory, but to give God the praise. What a mighty God we serve this morning. If you're glad to be here, can we bless him? Come on, bless the Lord this morning. Come on, let him know that you love him. Come on, bless him with your hand. Bless him with your mouth. Come on, with the fruit of your lips, magnify the Lord. Hallelujah, what a mighty God we serve. I said, what a magnificent God we serve. Hallelujah, from the rising of the sun to the going down of that very same sun, he's worthy to be lifted up and he's worthy to be praised. Amen, we do thank God for our leaders, amen, here today. Amen, our chief apostle, Dr. Tilden L. Colton, amen, and our executive pastor, Charnett L. Colton, we thank God for them today. Amen, our founders being here today, amen. Hallelujah, the honorable senior bishop, MacArthur Colton, amen, and our evangelist, Saronia Colton, we thank God for her, amen, being here today. Amen, each of you, amen, prophetess Banks, Amen. And Pastor James Banks, we thank God for you all. Amen. Pastor Carter downstairs, each of you, the Lord's children, we thank you. Amen. For making the city of Zion the church of your choice on today. Amen. Glory to God. Let's go to Proverbs, the sixth chapter. Amen. Beginning at the 16th verse and reading up into the 19th verse. Amen. Let's read along in unison this morning. Knowing always, amen, that whatever we put in, amen, we're going to get something out. Amen. You need a miracle. You need a healing. You need deliverance. Amen. If you need another touch from the Lord, amen, you can get that today. Amen. Amen. Go to God. We do say congratulations to all our ministers. Amen. That went up, hallelujah, on yesterday. Amen. The elevation has hit the house. Amen. And we thank God for each of you. Amen. Obeying the call of God on your life. Amen. It's only up from here. Congratulations to you. Amen. Proverbs, the sixth chapter. Amen. These six things of the Lord hate. Yea, seven are abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that divides wicked imaginations. Feet that be swift and run into mischief. A false witness that speaketh lies. Discord among brethren. Amen. Glory to God. First Chronicles chapter 4, beginning at verse 10, and let's read its entirety. And the word of the Lord says, And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, O oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed. And enlarge my coast, that thine hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. Amen. Let's clap our hands and receive the voice of the vine as they come. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise this morning. Get it. 
Worship and 
Thank you that in weakness, strength is made perfect. We thank you right now. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for salvation. You saved us, Lord, from a sinful world. You saved us, Lord. You gave us the Holy Ghost. And for that, we give you glory. We give you glory right now. And since we can't live by bread alone, we need you to feed us today. Give us a word directly from you. In the name of Jesus, we thank you now. We glorify you now. Now, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, I need you to prophesy down your row and tell them something good is about to happen to us. <laughs> I dare to tell somebody it's happening right now. It's happening right now. My broke days are over. My sad days is over. My lonely days is over. Well, who am I talking to here? I need at least three people to believe that. It's only up from here. I said it's only up from here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. While you're standing, give God praise for our leadership here. Amen. We honor the Lord for our founding bishop, the Honorable Bishop MacArthur Colton. We honor the Lord for our dear mother evangelist Colton. Thank God for the man and the woman of God. Thank God we appreciate the Lord, amen, that they were able to see, amen, with their own eyes, amen, what the Lord did for us, amen, on yesterday, amen, during our holy convocation. This has been a mind-blowing week. This, this has been a mind-blowing week. I've been in a lot of services. I've been in a lot of revivals. But we've had a mind-blowing week. And yesterday was just off the Richter scale. We broke the sound barrier. We broke the sound barrier. And man, we, we, we're just so excited to be, amen, home this morning. And then we'll go right back and get the conclusion of the matter. Amen. Praise God. We honor you, woman of God. Amen. We honor you. Amen. 
Pastor City of Zion, Executive Pastor of the Deliverance Tabernacle Fellowship of Churches. We, we thank you for what you do. You represent us well. You come on, City of Zion. You represent us well. We're proud to call you our pastor, our woman of God. What y'all think about it, man? You, you're a woman among women, and we thank you. Amen. Sister Pastor Eric Wilson Bell. Yeah, we we thank God. Amen. People all over the world are seeking to meet this young man. Amen. Praise God. And we thank God for his consistency. Man, I'm telling you, man, you're talking about a young man that loves the Lord. Amen. And I pray that the Lord will put somebody in his life that will love the Lord just as much as he do. Amen. We thank God. Amen. Amen. Pastor Bex and our prophetess Bex. Amen. Amen. We honor the Lord. Amen. Amen. Prophetess. Amen. She officially stepped over into, amen, her God-given assignment on yesterday. And we say welcome. Amen. And, and, and let's go to work and, and just um, uh, fulfill and amen this great purpose that the Lord has uh, in store. Amen. For us, God is so amazing. Amen. Elder Andrew Prather. Amen. And praise God. We thank God for him. Amen. He crossed over yesterday into the eldership. Amen. And we appreciate the Lord. Amen. For him. Amen. God is just so, I'm telling you, I'm super excited, man. Amen. Uh, uh, all my alma barrels are officially ministers now, man. Amen. Minister D. Town. Amen. Minister Helen Water. Minister Cassandra. Amen. Praise God. Let me just leave it at that now. Minister Cassandra. Amen. We thank the Lord. Amen for you guys and uh, amen. Praise God. And of course, Pastor Rochelle, we thank the Lord for uh, for the woman of God and all of her endeavors just to be who God called her to be uh, in Jesus' name. All of you, all of these great ministers, man, we, I'm going to tell you, you guys have blessed me on this week and I thank God for, amen. What's Sister Avis? Hey, there she is, right in my face. Amen. We thank God for Sister Avis. Amen. Minister Avis. Minister Thomas. Amen. We praise the Lord for her. Amen. Praise God. Who am I missing? Uh, I, of course, yes, Minister Carlos and Minister Ashley. We praise the Lord for them. Amen. Coming up on yesterday and they're getting ready. Amen. Praise God to help us relaunch this great youth ministry. Amen. Here we're excited about that. We're excited about that in Jesus' name. And these great hosts of deacons, we honor the Lord. We thank God for them. And, and we know that the Lord is, uh, he's just positioning us. And, and I thank God. I thank God for the people that are just getting stronger and stronger in Jesus' name. Do me a favor while you're standing right quick. Meet me in Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61, and then I want to shift over to 1 Corinthians um, 14 and 33, and I want you to loan me your voices, and we'll read these two uh, verses together. Uh, the first uh, that we will read will be Isaiah 61 and verse 7. Isaiah 61 and verse 7. Amen. In 1 Corinthians 14 and 33, I encourage all of you to make foolproof, amen, praise God, of the ministry that God has locked up in you. Amen. Praise God. And not only make full proof of the ministry that is locked up in you. Amen. But continue to submit yourselves under the authority of God. I was sharing with a group. Amen. Of ministers on yesterday that was asking me, just, you know, give me, give me a, a, a nugget. I said, the biggest nugget I can give you, amen, is no matter what God doing, you stay connected to your leader. Uh, stay connected to your leader. Don't, whatever you do, don't allow the enemy uh, to disconnect you from leadership because you're going to need a good leader. I don't care how you go. I don't care nothing about you being no prophet, no evangelist, pastor, uh, uh, teacher. Uh, come on here. Amen. All the chief apostle. I don't care what your title is. You need, come on here, a man and a woman of God that can keep you covered. And, I, and on that note, I thank God for a man like the Honorable Apostle Brazel Lane and Pastor Cheryl Lane. I honor them. Come on, it's okay. We honor them in their absence. Amen. That's my man of God and my woman of God. 
Amen. And I thank God for them in Jesus' name. Okay, Isaiah 61, and we'll read verse 7, and then we'll go right over to 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 14 and verse 33. Amen. Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61. And we'll read verse 7. And then we'll go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Thank God for our praise team and our musicians. Amen. Appreciate the Lord for them. Amen. Uh, 1 Corinthians 14 and 33. All right. Let's read uh, Isaiah 61 and verse 7. Let's read that together. Ready? Read. For your shame ye shall have double. For confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess the double. Everlasting joy. Mm -hmm. All right. First Corinthians chapter 14. First Corinthians chapter 14. And verse 33. 1 Corinthians 14 and 33. You help have that? Amen. Okay, ready to read. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to look and talk to you very briefly. Not going to hold you long. Amen. But I want to talk to you a few moments. Amen. About defeating the spirit of confusion. Amen defeating the spirit of um, confusion. As we look here at Isaiah 61, we've been talking and we've been ministering, amen, praise God, consistently about receiving the devil. We've been talking about receiving the devil, amen. We've been talking about how for your uh, shame, amen, praise God, you're going to receive the devil and for your confusion you're going to receive your portion I want to talk about that I'm going to be addressing a spirit head on today I ask that you would be attentive and as alert as possible as all ministers amen praise God to allow your focus to be on what God is doing amen and what God is saying because you never know when someone's deliverance is going to be connected to you amen. I'm going to say that again you never know when someone's deliverance is going to be connected, amen, to you. So it's very vital and it's very important, amen, that you allow the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit to have your undivided attention. It is a must in this season. It is a must because there are demons, there are spirits that have arrested individuals' minds and their purposes, amen. And it's very important that we understand that God wants to liberate and God wants to free them by any means necessary. I'm going to say that one more time. Yes. Amen. God wants to free them and he wants to deliver them by any means necessary. Yes. Everybody's not just coming to church to gaze and to look. And to, yes. Come on, ain't nobody hating on you. Ain't nobody jealous of you. We here because we want to be free. Yes. We want to worship God and we want to be liberated. Ain't nobody... Okay, I'm going to say that one more time before I move on because it's very vital that you tune and come all the way in. Amen. It's very important that we understand that God is looking for someone that will not only be tied up in their own deliverance, but they'll be tied up in somebody else's deliverance because you're not blessed until you can help someone else get blessed. You're not free until you can help someone else get free. Okay, I'm going to say that one more time before I get to the scripture. Somewhere I got to be before I get there. And God is trying to get us to a place to where we value not only our own deliverance, but we value someone else's deliverance. Can I say that again? And you may not believe it, but the reason why the enemy wants to keep you bound, because there's a group of people that is connected to you. And for you to remain bound, you're going to bind up and destroy an entire group of people. And their blood will be assigned to your hands. Can, can I get a witness here? As I told, as I shared with over, amen, I guess 30 or 40 leaders, amen, in our morning, amen, glory session on yesterday. A lot of us want to lead, but we don't want to be led. I'm going to say that again, especially to those of you that are in authority. Don't you ever get in a place to where you want to lead, but don't want to be led. To where you want to give orders, but can't follow order. Then you become a hypocrite. 
Okay, it's going to get quiet here. Can I stay in that vein that I'm on right there? You cannot require faithfulness, amen, from others, and you yourself are not faithful. You cannot require, amen, greatness from other people, and you're not striving to be great yourself. Can I get a witness in here? I'm looking for leaders, and I'm going to get to this. Amen. But there's a place I got to be before I deal with that. Amen. I'm looking for, amen, praise God, leaders in this season that won't be frail, that won't be frail and weak. Come on, and disembobulated. Come on here. Amen. Praise God by personal insecurities. But those that would do exactly what Jesus told us in training this morning, that we would daily deny ourselves and take up the cross and follow after him. I don't have time to be crying over what I do have or what I don't have because people's lives are literally on the line and someone's trying to get free and I don't have time to pull the covers over my head. Come on here and allow the enemy to distract me so that he can destroy them. You pull those covers waiting over your head. You open up those curtains and open those blinds. Come on here, get yourself together and put your best outfit on. And you come out of that house and let the world know, I be go, I may be going through, but I'm going to. I'm going through. you talking about how dark the tunnel is I'm going through. But you got to understand that at the end of this dark tunnel, there is a place called everlasting joy. There's a place called double double. Now let's get to the meat. Y'all ready now? Yeah. Yeah. Isaiah 61. And let me tell you something about Isaiah. This man's background wasn't like mine. My background, I come from the loins of a bishop and an evangelist. And never one time heard my mother or father use profanity. I never one time saw my dad intoxicated under the influence. Y'all hear me? I never one time saw my mother or my father disrespect and humiliate one another. Come on here. Not that they didn't go through, but they went through in integrity. Okay. They talked about their issues when we wasn't around. Part of what's wrong with our family is you're making children a part of grown folks' problems. I would ask my daddy certain things, and he said, Son, stay in a child's place. You cross that bridge when you get there. That's right. You want to irritate me and want to discuss grown folk issues around children. Oh, it's getting quiet already. And some of you are upset and you're trying to figure out you mad with one another because you don't understand how what y'all talked about done got out. You don't know how it got out. My Lord, my Lord. It got out because children and kids are talkers. Even some of you that used to be, amen, best friends and heads over here with one another, you wonder why y'all fell out. I know why you fell out, because you was having a discussion around your kids about your friend, and your kids done went back and told, and you want to whoop them. Oh, I'm talking good. You better be careful what you say. And not only that, you better be careful what you say. Amen. With people that have a childish mentality. Because some folk can't keep water. There are some nice buckets that I love those to, 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 to give my animal water out of those buckets. But the thing about those buckets, they those, those are, are, are buckets, they only hold water, amen, for about a month. And after a month, they gradually start leaking. And some of you got folks in your life that are the same way. They hold your business for about a month and then they start leaking and your business is all over town. I got some kin folks that I won't even let know what I'm going through. Oh, hit me up in here. Come on 
here. But I just need to vent. You better open up them vents up now. Honey, you better learn how to get on the altar and cast your cows on the Lord and say, Lord, if you don't fix it, it ain't going to get fixed. Study to be quiet. I'm trying to get somewhere before I get there because there's a spirit I'm coming after. Thank God for my mama. But out of 30 years of being married, not one time have I called my mother. The rebuke going to come. But I promise you, you're going to be all right if you listen to it. Or either you can turn a deaf ear and keep doing it the way you've been doing it. Not one time have I discussed an issue that my wife and I was having and degraded my wife to my mother. I knew I wasn't going to get no help. And I know my mama got the Holy Ghost. But there's some things about my wife and I business she ain't going to know nothing about. Okay, I guess no I'm going to get over that. No way. No way. Therefore, my wife and my mother have a woman's relationship. Amen. Come on here. My mother in law is a part of this ministry. Amen. Come on here, somebody. Because my wife ain't running to her. Come on here, talking about what we've gone through. Or what we're going through. Amen. Oh, I'm feeling a kick now. I'm feeling a mule spirit in him. But that got to be some integrity when it comes to marriage. Thank you, Pastor. There ought to be a line that nobody is allowed to cross when it comes to you and your husband and your wife. Now, don't get me wrong. We didn't go to them, but we sure went to Apostle Lane. We sure went to our man and woman of God and said, you better get to Georgia in a hurry. <laughs> Call my man of God. I said, that woman you gave me. Y'all know that's what Adam said. Adam, who told you you were naked? That woman you gave me. <laughs> well, we want to blame somebody. Can I get a witness? But at the end of the day, marriage is sacred. And until you value your marriage, come on here, it's going to go no further than where it is now. But there's an area, come on here somebody, there's an area in the spirit realm that you'll never go until you and your spouse get in that place. And that's the reason why I get frustrated with you single people that don't have nobody but you and the Lord. And don't never come to Bible study and don't never come to prayer and you ain't got nobody to tell you you can't go. Okay. Y'all ready? That was just advertising. Well, let's get to the message. Tell me the truth. Even if it hurt me, if it come down my road, tell me the truth. God is trying to raise up a people of integrity. Quit sitting around the table vomiting on each other. Come on, and if y'all gonna do anything, talk about how good God is and how wonderful he is to be saved. Come on here. I know at the end of the day we all got some flaws and got some issues, but let's learn how to count it all short and say, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. That's my brother and that's my sister. And you ain't finna run them down. Now, let me tell you about Saddam. Before you say what you finna say, let me go on and tell you that I'm subject to tell her what you told me about her. If that is you, ain't nothing wrong with your bucket leaking. I always keep one child that tell everything. I train mine like that. I'm always going to always have had one. So when they all go together, I ain't got to ask them what they did because I just wait on that one. I keep one child. 
<laughs> and if you know if I got enough sense to keep one biological child that'll tell everything, don't you know I'm gonna keep one on the deacon board that'll tell everything? Don't you know I'm gonna have keep one minister that'll tell? Don't you know I'm gonna have one music? I'm gonna have a spy on every one of these auxiliaries. Cause I know how y'all roll. Don't keep me an FBI on every one of them. Better come back and give me faith based instructions. So Isaiah didn't have a background like me. Amen. Praise God. He came. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. From a background that was kind of messed up. And let me tell y'all something. Just because you came from a jacked up background don't mean that your life going to be jacked up. Maybe your mama wasn't saying like mine. Maybe your daddy wasn't saying like mine. Maybe you're the only one in your family that even got the Holy Ghost and speaking tongue. Uh, but I promise you that God put you in your family to be a curse breaker. Come on, in a yoke that's strong. Am I talking good here? And let me tell you another thing. Amen. You ain't got to let people hold your yesterday over your today, trying to hinder your tomorrow. No, I don't care what you know about me. Yesterday is over and today is a new day. And the day will soon be my yesterday. Just as quick as I get into my tomorrow. Oh, glory. What I like about every day, Bishop, is I like about every day. Every day only have 24 hours. And after those 24 hours, that day ends. Can I prophesy? So the spell they put on you yesterday is no longer relevant because yesterday is over. But Isaiah began to prophesy. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. Do y'all see that? And I need you to flow with me. Amen. I'll, I'll, I'll pick that up. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to do what? Do I have any Bible toters? Amen. To preach the gospel, not the garbage, the latest news, but to preach the gospel. He talked about setting the captive free, binding up the broken heart. But when he get to verse number seven, amen, he said, and for your shame, you shall have what? Oh, come on, you shall have what? You shall have double. And then he talks about receiving your portion for confusion. Can I tell you that confusion is a weapon of war? It is a weapon of warfare. And it is one of the most used battle tools that the enemy uses. Amen. Isaiah 9 and 5 said, For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise. Confused noise. And with garments rolled in blood, but this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. How many of you know noise has a way of confusing you? Anybody in here still struggling and confused because you hear the siren, but you cannot determine whether it's an ambulance, the police, or a fire truck? Y'all, let's be honest. Let, let's, let's just be honest. Anybody, anybody still struggling to know what it is? Amen. Now, some of you, amen, are familiar. Now, come on here, somebody. Woo, 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 woo. You already know that's the police. Amen. Woo, woo. You already know that's the police because you have had an encounter with him. You know the sound of that fire truck. Most of the time, it just... Woo. I mean, it's loud and like, come on here. You, you know, eh, eh, you hear that? You already know it's a fire truck because you're familiar with an ambulance. You're familiar with it. Noise can confuse you. Can I deal with that? That's the reason why those of you that flow in the prophetic, those of you that have the spiritual gifts, your biggest battle will be in your mind battling with noises. Can I prove it to you? Have you ever been in prayer and with nobody at home but you and you started hearing noise? Sound like you heard something break. Sound like somebody was at the door. Seemed like the phone was ringing. That noise. And the enemy specializes in news and noise because he knows he can take noise to confuse you. But I wonder do I have anybody that have learned how to get in prayer where you can't hear nobody but you and God. How the devil cutting up. But once you get to that third 
certain level of prayer, the noise can't bother you no more. Because sometimes the noise you hear in prayer is your own voice. Can I prove it to you? Father, I just thank you. I just give you praise today. Lord, I honor you. God, I thank you. God, I thank you for a clean heart and a right spirit. I thank you, God, for my children, my wife. I thank you how you're blessing our family. You know, I need to cut the grass. And, and uh, you know, I wanted that man going to call me with them loads today. And, and uh, man, I think I got to pay my light bill for uh, 3 o'clock. They're going to cut my lights off. Am I supposed to do that today? And uh, I think I'm supposed to. I mean, uh, uh, I think Gertrude wanted me to come to Take her to the uh, pharmacy. And, 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 come on, you're anybody. If you be honest with yourself, even your own voice can be the noise that you hear in prayer. That's the reason why you got to learn how to not only play in, pray in English, you got to learn how to pray the way the Holy Ghost take you over. Come on here, somebody. And it ain't you praying no more, but it's him. enemy wants to confuse you. Amen. What does it mean to be confused? To be confused is to be perplexed or bewildered. 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 It is to make unclear or indistinct or to fail to distinguish, distinguish between. To fail to distinguish between. I don't know whether it's night or day. Yes. 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 Anybody spiritually ever been there? Yeah. So I hope you so spiritually you can tell whether it was night or day Amen. confused yes. Amen. you ever had some people in your life that was for you but you really couldn't tell Amen. confusion Amen. you ever been in a place where people was against you but you really couldn't tell Amen. you can tell the difference you can distinguish the difference between who was for you and who was against you so now you're finding yourself in a place to where amen you're getting close to who really ain't for you and you're getting farther away against Okay, I'm going to leave that alone. So, so it's very easy for the enemy to confuse you. That, well, now you don't even know what you save or lost. You, you, you don't need, now, now you're stuck on stupid and people coming to you trying to tell you that Jesus is the white man God. You're very confused. If you don't know who Jesus is, that says to me you haven't had an encounter. Oh, come on, bro. I tell them all the time. They try to tell me, amen, about their newfound gospel. Come on here, somebody. Amen. But I always remind them, amen. That if the name of Jesus have brought me this far, I'm satisfied with Jesus. Come on, bro, put your beads up. I'm satisfied with Jesus. I found out that prayer, amen, is more powerful in Christianity than it is in any other religion. Because the other religion, the God they're calling on is, in, is either in the grave or in hell. And he might be in jail. But the God that I, I tell you what to do, bro, you come on up here. Amen. And we're going to get on this altar and I'm going to let you go first. And you call on the name of your God. And we're going to let the God that answer by fire, let him be God. Oh, I forgot. You got to fire up to talk to your God. I talked to my God and he said, fire down. are confused. Y'all all right? People are confused, but if we maintain the same values and priorities of the world, then we're going to find it impossible, number one, to distinguish ourselves from the world, and number two, to influence the world. Number one, we as Christians, we got to, amen, the world should be able to distinguish between us and them. They should be able to look at us and tell that we got something that they missing, but yet they won't. And then, amen, we should be able, amen, to influence the world to want what we got. Amen. Can I talk to you a minute? You ought to present Jesus in a way to where everybody can say, what must I do to be saved? You ought to present Jesus in such a way to where your friend look at you and say, God, I don't know what it is, but something happened to you. Now, come on. They ought to be looking at you and say, man, man, there's something different about you. And there it is. The door just opened up. Now you can tell them, I found the Savior, and he's sweet eye. No, God, I came by your house last Sunday, and you went down. And I came by this Sunday before.
before that. And you know how we do on Sunday, sit around and get a little wine and come on, get our little breakfast and get a little wine. But the last three Sundays, I've been coming by the house and you ain't been at home, daddy. Girl, let me tell you, I went to the church one night and my heart went right and something got a hold to me. Girl, I got me some new wine now. The wine I'm drinking now don't come in a bottle. Come on here, somebody come out of a book. I'm drinking wine out of a book. Ain't that powerful? I don't have to drink wine out of a sack no more. I'm drinking wine, and the wine that I'm drinking out of the Bible, it gives me stability, security. Come on here, and joy. It ain't that I quit liking wine. I just found something stronger. <laughs> you know, there's some folks, there's some folks, amen, hallelujah, that, that, that's on crack that don't smoke weed. There's some folks that's on meth, come on, that don't smoke crack. Come on here. There's some folks, come on here, on pills that don't do none of it. The, 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 the stronger the substance, the more you push other stuff aside. Come on, that won't do for me no more. So, so when you find something stronger, you say, I ain't gonna be needing that no more. So that's what I'm trying to do. All I'm trying to tell you, bro. I don't mess around and find something. I found something that make me hide and hide. I found something. Y'all ain't gonna hear it. Oh, y'all, I love. And y'all wonder why, why he jumping? Why he hollering and screaming? Same reason you do it when you get high. Come on here. You know drunk folks is loud. I'm just drunk in the spirit. <laughs> Only time you're gonna see a quiet drunk is when he passed out. <laughs> oh glory and the only time you're going to see me quiet in the church is when I'm passed out in the spirit <laughs> oh they tripping on up making noise when they was at the club all night <laughs> and you come over here and we do it like this and you think something wrong with us been twerking and tweaking all night and then gonna come up in here and think something wrong with us cause we hollering and giving God praise. Let me tell you why we hollering and giving God praise because when we think of the goodness of Jesus and oh hi, 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 woo, shabba, hi, that he done for me my soul get happy oh, no, I get happy just thinking about how good, how good it is to be saved I said, I'm going to go home, y'all. Give me just a few minutes. Hallelujah. It is high time that we wake up from confusion. Lest we find ourselves on the wrong side of the distinction as individuals in our family, in our church, and even in the nation. Believers today are confused about their relationship with God. Amen. They are confused about their place in the body of Christ. They are confused about the world, the worldview. They are confused about their priorities. Amen. I asked my wife the other day, who was talking about voting, since we're talking about world priorities, we were leaving, and I said, baby, who would gonna vote for that tree uh, uh, gonna, what about the white line or the yellow line amen in other words I was telling her amen I'm looking at these clouds amen praise God hallelujah hallelujah Jesus I tell you what I'm just gonna I'm just gonna vote for the one that got the government on his shoulders and that's the man somebody said I don't know who to vote for I'm gonna give you a hint because pastors are not supposed, supposed to influence people on which way to vote so since I can't tell you which way to vote let me give you just a description, amen, and a few clues over who to vote for. Vote for the man when you look on the paper that got eyes like a flame of fire and hair like lamb wool and his voice sound like the voice of, of many waters. And since I can't tell you who to vote for, just let me give you his nickname, Emmanuel. Let's just let me give you his background. He was born of a virgin and his earthly father name was Joseph. So that's who you vote for.
We're confused on whether we want to be, amen, uh, Republican or Democratic. We, we're confused of whether we want to be, amen, uh, a straight or gay or bi. Amen. We are confused. And anytime you're confused, you will find yourself doing things that are not natural, amen, uh, for a man or woman to do. But since God is not the author of confusion, then we just read that. We just read that God is not the author of confusion. So since God is not the author of confusion, before we deal with that spirit, I need to ask you, if God is not the author of confusion, then who is? The devil, he is. Our greatest fulfillment as believers comes as we discern and act on God's word. And not only his word, but his will for our life. Uh, look at what the Bible said. The pursuit of our personal passion and our interests and goals, amen, should equal a having a personal relationship with God. Today I want to share a few thoughts about how to come out of confusion and back into the place of peace and victory. First of all, you need to spend some time specifically in the presence of God. In the presence of God and ask him to fill you with the Holy Ghost. And then ask the Holy Ghost to expose any area of confusion in your life. And then you better be ready because when you ask God to expose a man come promise and confusion in your life, you'll be surprised of the ones that's causing the chaos in your life. Prayers like that are always answered. When you ask God to reveal confusion and compromise, you better be prepared because sometimes God will show you that you yourself are the one that's causing confusion in your life. But then you got to repent of any wrong motive. You got to repent of any agenda, any priority, any behavior or thinking. Trust the Lord to put you on a path of personal revival and restoration. Because some of us ain't doing it, but we keeping it close by. I said that on last Sunday, you know, some of you have been battling and struggling with certain habits. And then what you'll do. You'll quit for three days. But the reason you'll go back to doing it is because you didn't get rid of your habit. You kept it in the nightstand. Come on here. You kept it on your side of the bed. In other words, I want God to deliver me from drinking. But I ain't gonna pull this liquor out. I'm not gonna get rid of this beer. I'm gonna keep it in the house and see how strong I am. Negro, please. You can't take fire in your bosom and not be burned. Come on here. Matter of fact, if you want to be delivered from alcohol for real, don't get a little away because you're helping somebody else become a fool. Don't give it away. Pour it down the sink. Come on here. Put it in a trash bag and break the bottles. Amen. And then reroute your drive. Don't even go by the liquor store no more. Don't even ride by the liquor house no more. Say, no. Y'all want to hang? No, I can't hang out with y'all no more. Why? Because I'm trying to be free from myself. It's some folk you can't hang around when you're trying to be delivered for real. It's some uh, parties you can't go to when you want to be free for real. It ain't that I don't trust them. I don't trust him. 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 I'm the him. Am I talking to somebody other than myself? If you put yourself, amen, too close to a man, a wooden heater. Do I have anybody that growed up around a wooden heater? Uh-huh. How many? Let me see your hands again. Can I tell y'all? I had to pray hard for y'all because those that growed up around a wooden heater, you got picked at at school. You got laughed at. Let me tell you why they picked at you. Because you smelt like a fire. You smelt like smoke. Come over here, somebody. I can tell some of you I'm praying for y'all hard because your mama, amen, praise God, left that straightening comb in your hair too long. And you went to school smelling like butter up. Come over here. Smelling. Y'all know we come from the rough side of the tracks. Can I get it? If you hang around certain stuff too long, 
That's the reason why, amen, certain stores I don't stop at on my way to church. Most of them don't do it, but used to be a time every quickest store smelt like they just set the smelt like they set the cigarette section on fire. Come on here. You go in that quickest store and come out there smelling like, come on here, cool, camel, black and mild, wet and wild. You come out of there smelling, come on here. And then folks say, you been smelling? No, I ain't been smoking. Huh, come on here. Some of you don't even smoke dope. But the reason why we keep looking at you funny, come on here, because we smell it coming out of your follicles. You been, if you ain't been smoking, you've been hanging around somebody. But when you want to be delivered for real, you can't even put yourself in that. No. Oh, so I guess I'm preaching crazy. I guess this is too old fashioned to be preaching now. The Bible said, come out from among them and be separate. Said some folk, you're going to have to put that relationship on pause. And then some of you just going to have to delete. And then some of you going to have to throw your phone down through the woods for a while. I can't say that. Some of you need a phone fast. Hold on, God. Yeah, yeah. What's going on? I'll be right back with you. Yes, my God. Help us, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, Apostle. Amen, amen. Say it is. Yeah. Come on, Apostle. Oh, and I hope you don't think I was talking about you at home. You sitting right up in here, putting God on pause. Come on here. So you can communicate with somebody that should have came to church them own self. No, the devil is a cock out of Fool, if you want me, then you get with me after serving. But when I'm in the house of the Lord, don't email me, don't text me, don't call me, because Jesus is on the main line. I just repeat three quarters of the church. God can't talk to you. God can't talk to you. Because he's trying to talk to you, but can't get a word in. Because you highly distracted by somebody else's voice. People can't have so much influence on you to where you listen to them more than you listen to God. <laughs> okay, I guess I'm wrong. Let me go pray. Let me go back to school because I think I'm missing something. You got to learn how to get to that place to where when it's you and God. Is you and some of y'all are quit praying, praying to answer the phone. Okay. Oh, I just think it out. Oh, I need ring, ring. Oh, let me see this. Praise the Lord. I was just calling. You mean to tell me you came out of prayer? Turn it off. Turn it off. Amen. One of my daughters reminded me, said, you know, and I started thinking about that. How many, I wonder how many, for I got eight acres of land. I mean, how many, I wonder how many acres of phones I got. Because, you know, it got to a point that where when I realized that, that, that whooping them wasn't getting through. You, you, you understand? Amen. Praise God. I, I did like this old schoolhouse. I cut me out a piece of plywood and wrapped it in duct tape and had me a principal's paddle. That didn't work. Made them pick their own switches. That wouldn't work. Got, went to the a, a good wheel and got me a good belt. Come on here. That didn't work. Come on, and they got big enough. Come on here. Boom. That didn't work. So I said, I got to come up with them. How can I get these jokers? Put them in the room. Tell them, turn the TV off. That didn't work. But one day I said something to one of them and I, I found out what the kryptonite was. I said, I tell you what, three days I need your phone. <gasps> Just passed out, lost all her breath. I said, "Oh, oh, I got the, I got what the matter with you now. I got the soul spot. Come on here, act like an angel for three days. Three days, act like an angel." <laughs> I'm all in the kitchen. I wonder, somebody must broke in my house and watched these. Oh, my dad, I watched those videos. Man, my boy, I swept and mopped this floor. 
Oh, yeah, Dad, I done cooked us a little something. Praise the Lord. Three days. Oh, oh, after them three days, get right back in them and food. I said, I tell you what, let me get that report card and find out. You've been going over there. I've been dressing you up, looking like a millionaire, and you acting like Bozo the Clown. Come on here, got that report card, and I never in my life seen that much, that many F's on one. Not the F's, I seen some F's. It was so many F's on that report card. I took that phone and body slammed it to the concrete, and then throwed it down through the wood, and she got smart and started making AP on the road. So I figured out what the problem is. Come on here, somebody. That one-eyed monster is no longer on the wall. It's in our hand. Some of you can live holy if you get rid of your cell phone. Yeah. 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 Bible on. You better get your paper Bible. Yeah. You got now see me at the church. I'll buy you a Bible. Yeah. So you're reading your Bible. <laughs> Hold on, God. I think I'm gonna leave this kind of preaching. Uh -oh. I'm trying to build a big old church next door. I ain't gonna be the bit though. You talking about the mark of the beast? Y'all, you already got it. The mark is what they gonna be in your hand. Come on here, somebody. Say in your head. Come on here. You already look at what's in your hand. Okay, I better leave it alone. Your hand in your head. In your hand. Right there. Amen. Right there. The enemy wants to confuse you to where you don't know what state of mind you're in. Yeah. Anybody ever re dealt with real depression? Amen. Yeah. I, ain't, I ain't talking about this little stuff y'all call. I'm talking about anybody ever been challenged in your mind Amen. to where you were confused for real? It, it wasn't that you didn't want to do right, but something was playing with your mind. Am I talking to the right people here? The enemy has a way of confusing your mind. Amen. It's confusing when you save and you living right and look like all hell breaking loose. And you got somebody else ain't even thinking about living right and look like everything going smooth. That can be a little confusing. I'm paying tithes and offering. Come on here giving and look like my money still me on attack. But then you got somebody over here ain't never gave God no more than $3 and look like they riding good. That's kind of confusing. David said, I almost slipped looking at the prosperity of the wicked. But then I thought about that. I thought about I was confused, but then I thought about that. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. I almost gave up, but then I thought about weeping in due for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. I almost backslid, but then I thought about they that wait upon the Lord who shall, I, shall renew their strength. Tell your neighbor I'm leaving here free. And I'll never be confused again. Oh, I, I got somebody to say that again. I'm leaving free today. The enemy wants to do everything he can to keep you away from truth. Bible is the only thing that can break confusion. Yes. Amen. Do you hear me, Deacon Bell? Yes, the Word of God is the only cure for my confusion. Yes. Yes. See, because this spirit Amen. of confusion, come here, confusion, is following me. And every time I try to get close to somebody that can really help me, uh -huh. confusion get in the way. Ma, 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 ma. Yes, sir. But for some reason, when I get around people that are not beneficial, confusion bags up and allows me to develop relationships 
with people who are not beneficial. But hinders relationships. That are going to stop. Look like everybody I get close to. Confusion show up. Oh, I wish I were talking to some real folks. Matter of fact, it ain't that I don't love her. But confusion keep showing up. So now I don't know if I want to stay or leave. Because confusion. It ain't that I don't want to go to church. But I just don't understand. Why is it that every church I get in? Confusion. I don't understand. I got on the dicker board. Confusion. I got in the choir. Confusion. Came a usher. Confusion. I just got the way I say, you know what I'm going to do? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to come to church. And I ain't going to bother nobody. But for some reason, every time I go to do good, Good. Yes, sir. Evil. And confusion is pretty evil. Yeah. So it ain't that I ain't trying to get free. Matter of fact, I'm hearing the preacher preach. And I done made up in my mind, I'm going to get to that altar. And I'm going to get saved today. And I'm going to get delivered. But every time I go to get free, confusion breaks out. So now I want to be free. But look, and then, matter of fact, sometimes. I manage to get to the altar. I manage to cry, to repent. They laid hands on me, and I felt real good. But for some reason, when I get home, for some reason, I can't even enjoy my freedom for 24 hours. Because everywhere I go, confusion. Got a seat next to me. I wish I had somebody in. But see, confusion keep following me because I keep leaving the door open for confusion to get in. But when I done got to that point to where I'm sick and tired of being confused, and I acknowledge God. Jesus. Father, I need you. Amen. I come before you right now. Yes. I'm tired of being confused. Yes. I'm tired of every time I get in that place I need to be. Yes. Here come the enemy again. Jesus. So guess what the Lord does? He don't, he don't himself always just come and defeat the enemy. Uh -huh. But what he'll do you? He'll give me his word. Yeah. 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 And so what I do with it Jesus. when he give it to me is I take it and I hide it. Yeah. 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 So now I done took the word and I done hid it in my heart. Yeah. So now I go to pray and confusion show up, but I don't entertain confusion. I go to church and confusion show up, but I don't entertain. See, one thing I found out about confusion, confusion loves attention. So when I stop giving confusion my attention, confusion go and find somebody else. Now I can love her. Because confusion is gone. See, because some of y'all said, I'm sick of this man. <laughs> Can I just get relatable a few moments? I'm so sick of this man. God, if you don't do something, I will. <laughs> Some of y'all been practicing on, on your grits. <laughs> Lord, if you don't do something about this man. <laughs> Lord Jesus. Folks just telling you, child, you got a good man. You saying to yourself, I sure wish you got to get him taken. <laughs> Some of you, she took the man and you cried. <laughs> and some of you, she took the man and you cried. Some of y'all cried because he was gone. And some of y'all cried because he didn't leave soon enough. 
Okay, look how y'all looking. You thought I was going to prophesy and say, oh, I just see he going to stay and y'all going to be all right. Now, for some of you, I see that man finna get, he, he, uh, he finna go. Come on here. And God finna put somebody in your life that's going to love you for you. And you're not going to be confused no more whether you're the main squeeze or the side chick. Come on here. You're going to know without a doubt. God going to put somebody in your life that's going to love all that hell out of you. Well, some of y'all, you some of y'all think I'm playing. He just going can I prophesy? Anybody need a prophetic word? You should. Sure? I don't know if you want it today. Some of you, you're gonna call, and that number gonna be disconnected. Some of you gonna go by there looking for them, and they ain't even gonna live there no more. There's some folk finna come up missing. Because the Lord says, since you won't let them out your life. I'm going to get them out for you. See, because some of you love hard. And you love so hard to where sometimes you love folk that don't love you. And you think, you think, you think it's something you can do to make them love you. But let me tell you from, from a man perspective, ain't you know, a man that don't want to be there, ain't nothing you can do to make him stay. He'll just come by there when it's convenient for you to do that little trick. And after that over, he going right on back. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. I should, I and that's confusion. Come on here. You, you, you beat me Monday and told me you were sorry. So I let you came back Tuesday and you beat me again Wednesday. So now I'm confused. Oh, God. This ain't no time for you to be nobody punching bag. And I ain't just talking to, I ain't just talking to the women either. Because you got some fighting women. Shoot. Women go to jail for the domestic violence just like men. Bitch, I'm looking at some of you. Shoot. I know you got a heat, but I hate to be the man to try to hit you. I know he hit you because he'll come to church next Sunday and he'll still be that way. Everybody think he's giving God praise. You all right, bro? Yeah, I'm good. I've had to where we had a little like a misunderstanding. One thing led to another. Two days later, I was at the emergency room. I'm looking at some of y'all boy. You don't recommend. Me and ain't the only one. Okay. Let me get back in the spirit. Just show me what a lie is. Some of y'all women in here be like, I wish he would. <laughs> Look at me, some of y'all are like, I heard somebody just say, I want him to. <laughs> Either way it go, you're going to need a good preacher. <laughs> <laughs> to pray for us or either you or tie you. How I many you know the enemy wants to confuse you by any means necessary? He'll have you spiritually colorblind. I was told that colorblind people, they, they really struggle when it comes to blue and black. Amen. Uh, the really colorblind people have a struggle with color coordinating. Amen. They'll think they never leave out the house and think they sharp as a tank. Come on here. Amen. And come up in here and we're trying to figure out where in the world you get that from. So we don't go to that store and buy that. Colorblind people. And unfortunately, there are some people who are spiritually colorblind. Come on here. They can't see God when he show up. They Come on here. They can't see the enemy when he show up. But I got some people in here that have the spirit of discernment. And you, I know, I know God from the devil. Come on here. I know wrong from right. I know good from evil. But I heard him say, for your shame, I'm going to give you double. And for their confusion, come on here. I'm going to give them their portion. Look at your neighbor and tell them you'll never be confused again. I need to prophesy. I need to take about three minutes to prophesy. And then I'm going to give the benediction. Look at that neighbor one more time and tell him you'll never be confused again but tell them the enemy will God I need you to look at one more neighbor and say neighbor you'll never be confused again tell them but the 
the enemy will. Tell him, say, explain that to me. Tell him God is getting ready to confuse what's been confusing you. Anybody in here can testify. The enemy had me confused. But I'm reminded of King Jehoshaphat. I'm reminded how there was a battle getting ready to take place, Bishop. And Jehoshaphat went and prayed and saw the Lord. And he began to talk to God. And God told him, what I want you to do here is I want you to get the worshipers. I want you to get the praisers. And I want you to put them on the front line. And I want you to send them first. But I want to tell you that why they were giving God glory, why they were praising God, the Bible says that the enemy showed up and it Instead of them killing Jehoshaphat in Israel, can I tell you they rose up and they destroyed one another. Confusion came in. The enemy got confused. And I'm here to tell you, I don't know what's been after you. I don't know what's been confusing you. But your enemy is getting ready to get confused because they thought you were giving up. They thought you were dead, but when they look up and see you, that witch gonna be confused. She gonna say, "How in the world? I done worked all my witchcraft. How in the world? I done did all this stuff. I done burn all this stuff. I done scattered all this powder. And instead of her getting bitter, she has gotten better." The enemy going to be confused when they walk up in here and say, what's wrong with these folks? I thought I sent a spell to tear down Zion, but instead of them being torn down, they done got bigger and better. Because the Bible says that Egypt was persecuting Israel, but the Bible says that the more Pharaoh afflicted them. I feel my happy right now. The more Pharaoh afflicted them, the more they grew and multiplied. And I'm looking at some folks in here right now that has been, you've been knocked down. You've been ostracized. You've been criticized. But God has been by your side because they don't understand how you lost it all, but now you got more. Do I have anybody in here that ever been in a losing season? Look like you were just losing, losing in your family, losing in your health, losing in your ministry, losing in your finances. Anybody here can be real with me. I even lost my mind, but now that I think about it, everything I lost could be replaced. I lost the job and got a better job. I lost the business and got a better business. I lost the house and got a better house. I lost the car and got a better car. But that one thing about it, I lost the car, lost the house, lost the job, lost the business. But this is that I have the world in giving and they can't take it away that's the reason why I've learned how to dance in the rain anybody in here can dance in the rain and let the enemy know you meant it for my bad but God meant it for my good. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I just don't understand how you made it through all that. Tell them I'm looking at you and I still don't understand how you made it through all that. Say, neighbor, can you just help me? How did you make it? Tell them, first of all, I have a mode called survival mode. And when I get in that mode, 
me nothing. Anybody know you'll survive. Anybody know that God is getting ready to restore everything that you lost. Double, double for your trouble. Double, double, double in your mind. Double, double, double in your body. Double, double, double in your money. Double in your ministry. High five somebody two times. Double, double. Get them two times. Somebody 
Cheer, 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 cheer
you. If you're here right now and you're not saved, I dare you to come on down and call his name. If you're here right now and you're not saved and you want the Lord to come into your life, I dare you to come on down. If you're here now and you don't have the Holy Ghost, I dare you come on down. Give your life to the Lord. I wish I had somebody that would tie a living in sin. Wish I had somebody that would tie a living in sin. And you want you wanna live for Jesus. I dare you make your way to this altar. If you're calling, if you're calling, maybe you you are backslide and you won't and come on back. I dare you to come on down. Won't he save you? Won't he save you? Won't he save you? Won't he save you? When will he do it? Won't he heal you? Won't he heal you? When will he do it? Won't he deliver you? Won't he deliver you? But the question is, when will he do it? When will he do it? When will he do it? Right now. Right now. Yeah, 
answer your prayer. If you call in the morning, you can call at night. I found out he will. He'll do it. He'll do it. Won't he do it? He'll do it. He's a prayer answering God. He's a weight maker. He's a murder man. He's a mind regulator. 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 He'll save. He'll do it. 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 He will. He'll do it. He'll do it. If you call. Declaration. Thank you. 
hands and just say thank you, Lord. Come on, thank you, Lord. God bless you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Find somebody just speak blessings over their lives right quick at the climax of this meeting. I want you to just find somebody and just speak blessings over their lives. Just speak blessings over them. I speak blessings over you. I speak blessing over your family. Yes, Lord. I speak blessings over you. I speak blessings over your family. I speak blessings over you. I break every chain, every curse. I speak blessings over these boys. Heaven is alive. Peace over your mind. I speak blessings over you. I speak blessings over you. I speak blessings over your life. Let's say, speak blessings over someone. There you go. Speak blessings. Speak blessings. I speak blessings over your life. <laughs> speak blessings. That's it. I speak blessings over your life. I speak blessings over your life. That's it. I speak blessings over your life. Even as you speak blessings over one another. I speak blessings over your life. I come against sickness and disease. I come against the spirit of infirmity. I curse everything that needs to be cursed. I bind everything that needs to be bound. And I speak blessings. I receive it in Jesus' name. Speak blessings over your life. Now come on and clap your hands and receive those blessings that have been spoken. Anybody feel like you're blessed? Anybody feel like you've been blessed? Anybody feel like greater blessings are coming? Hallelujah. I come against the spirit of confusion, Alzheimer's, dementia. Every infirmity that would try to attack your mind. How old are you, son? How old are you? How old are you? You're 16 years old. Believe it or not. I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior at 16. I was 16 years old when I came to the altar and gave my life to the Lord. I was only 16. By 17, Really, before my 17th birthday, I had started preaching. By the time I turned 18, I was a pastor. My life has been somewhat, I've had some trouble, but it's been wonderful. A lot of my friends died. A lot of my friends died in automobile accidents. Some of my friends were murdered and killed. But I'm still alive. Because I made the decision. And can I tell you something? I didn't want to go to church. I'm just going to be real with y'all. I'm just going to be straight up. I didn't like church. I didn't want to go to church. I wanted to hang with the boy. I didn't want to do nothing. But you know what? I found out at an early age that the best choice you can ever make is to come to church. And I would like to personally thank y'all, man. I thank y'all for coming to church. I'm glad everybody came. But when I look up, I can see young men. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. These streets don't care nothing about you. There's people out there, man, will kill you and then go back and laugh and say, man, I killed you. I killed that young man. You know how they'll put it, though. I killed him. You know. Stay in the house of the Lord. Yes, I would love the opportunity if y'all go to church on Okay. These are your who boys are these? These are your boys. Okay. Okay, y'all be good. Keep doing it. Let me do me a favor, man. Y'all come to church with your boys. I promise you, I try to keep it out. You know, hype. There ain't no boy in church. <laughs> we try to, you know, we try to keep it a little calm. But we need young soldiers like that. Yeah. We churches can't survive without young soldiers. Right, right. And I speak blessings over y'all yeah. life. Yeah. I speak blessing. I speak the spirit of protection over y'all. Yeah. Yeah. I'm 
some time to see how young boys stretched out, laying in the altar. That don't have to be. They don't have to die. And I rebuke that spirit, man. Come on, man. I promise you, we can do this together. There are some young people that y'all know that I don't know. Y'all can get them to come to church when I can. Let's try Jesus. Let's give Jesus a try. Let's live for him. And I know sometimes parents can be a little rough. I ain't lying. I got so tired of my mama sometimes. But you know, I didn't tell her that, but you know, I always got to give me a speech before I go somewhere. That's right. That's your point. Be careful who you hang around. Right. Come home a certain time. That's right. I got tired of that. You know what I mean? Especially as I got your age, 16, you know, I'm a teenager. How old are you, son? You're 12. Let me tell y'all something. Y'all at a right age for the devil to kill you. Let me tell you something. If you stay with the Lord, let me tell you something. This minister D. Terrell. This young man got a testimony. He was a teenager. He was just a kid when his, his mom started coming here. Long story short, he can talk to you about gay baby. He can talk to you about those streets. He ain't always been where he is, Mr. Carlos. He ain't always been where he is. But some of these games that's out there, not saying y'all in them, but some of them games out there, them games, some of them, brother, we created some of that stuff. You understand? Out there, if I wouldn't have got saved, I'd probably be old G in the game now. You know what I mean? But let me tell you, I'm alive. I'm very free, but I'm alive. So I tell you, man, we, we want to adopt y'all as our little brothers. Man. Amen. Amen. We love you, man. We appreciate y'all. I promise you that God is so amazing. Come on, clap your hands and look at me, buddy. You want to do me a favor, keep these babies in church. And I know some of you that have small kids, sometimes you may not want to come because, you know, some uh, these kids act out and it can be embarrassing. But let me tell y'all something. We used to cheer. We used to cheer. Ain't it right, Sister Bo? We used to cheer. And push come to it, we know we got what the matter with, but push come to it. We'll help you with your babies. Amen. We'll help you. We're praying that in the near future we'll have, you know, daycare and our children, they'll be being ministered to, and we'll be able to have a, you know, grown folk section in here. But in the meantime, we are village. Amen. And it's going to take all of us to raise our children. Y'all y'all, y'all listening to me? We are village. Let me tell y'all all the same song. Young people going to come in. And all of them ain't been church like y'all. Amen. All, right. all these young people don't come on here. The older one is supposed to teach the young one. Come on here. You think it's something, amen, that's inappropriate and ain't right? Pull them to the side. Love them. Get the name. Get the number. Go out to lunch with them. Say, hey, let me talk to you. Just let me talk to you as a big sister, you know, as a mother figure. Come on. Some of us want to do better. Come on here. We just don't know how to do better. The world already tripping on Then we come in here. Y'all tripping. Help me. Help me. Sense. Bishop, we, we've been in this thing a long time. Some stuff we know, some people just getting in it, but we can't run them away. We're nasty. Come on, brothers. Come on, brothers. Let's, let's show these young ladies that's coming. You know what I mean? Everybody that look at you ain't lusting at you. That's right. They're going to get on that. Some of y'all jump out, gonna knock your eyes out your head. Come in this pulpit, ain't nothing that I don't see. Everything walk by, you like your. I pray God put a crook in your neck. You hear this respect our sisters. You never find a good woman by night. Ooh, that shook no. Uh, women are looking for people that are attracted to their mind, Amen. not just their body. Amen. These women, don't y'all leave me out here and paint me. Amen. Won't nobody just want you for what they see? Amen. Come on, brothers. Amen. But if y'all sisters come up, we'll have to come up. Amen. If you, if, you, if you come on the daily jump, say, no, nah, you, you can't even holler at me with that. Just, you know, first of all, I ain't your shot. And second of all, you call me a B again, I'm going to go upside your head and punch you in your coat.
come up, we'll come up. If you raise your standards, don't feel like you got to lower your standards for somebody to be in your life. There are, some, there are some successful men, come on here somebody, that's looking for a woman, number one, that values herself. So real man, you want no woman that don't feel good about herself. Don't just do that stuff for me. You do you come on here. My wife learned how to how to look good for herself. And I just follow her. <laughs> I said, I just noticed. Don't get them about that stuff. Come on, she get her lashes down, done, that's fine. Come on here. Sometimes I roll for them to be off. Hey, baby, my lashes. No, sometimes I don't want them lashes in the way. Sometimes I don't want her to sleep with her head hanging out the bed. Not for that reason. Not for that reason. She's been through the beauty hall. Uh oh, baby. Uh oh. Hey, 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 what's wrong with you? Oh, these days. Oh, Give me two days. Oh, these little towels off. Hey, show me what it like. Baby, can we just go? No, why, baby? Why? Ooh, my head about to kill me. I just want to go to that salon and give my picture and say, look, if my wife ever come back here, y'all better never do my house. I mean, well, just kind of just get you some clippers. Let's just, just, just do this together. Hey, those special cases, you slap a wig up there. God, but come on, clap your hands and get done the praise. Anybody, anybody just have enjoyed church today? Seriously. Anybody glad you came? Everybody glad you came. I love you all and I thank you for making the city of Zion the church of your choice. And remember this Mark 9 23. If you can believe, all things are possible to them that believe. God bless.